Hi, in this video we're going through everything you need to know for the letter scrap challenge for your 100% playthrough. How to start it, where the pieces are, and what to do with our serial killer, Peter Dreyfus. Hi and welcome back, my name's Dan and I'm an old, grumpy gamer. Grand Theft Auto is a truly massive game. Between GTA 5 and the constant updates from Rockstar for GTA Online, there's no shortage of new content and interesting things to do. Join me then in our continuing series, Getting Gold in Every Dare Mission in GTA 5, as we look at the Letter Scrap Challenge and the Grand Theft Auto mission as Starlet in Vinewood. Before we dive in, if you're new to the channel, we do how-to guides, news and giveaways, so consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay up to date. Completing this challenge is extraordinarily tedious, there's no two ways about it. It was boring as sh It was boring at capturing the footage, and I suspect Kengo9990 was bored out of their mind editing the video too. To complete this challenge, you'll need a helicopter and about two hours. Now we're starting near the bottom of the map, so you can typically find a free helicopter from the hospital here. on top of the police lockup just a few streets away. Or near the private moorings here. Oh, and full disclosure, I'm using a couple of mods here, but only for the sake of clarity and brevity. The mods I have are Menu and Collectible Collector, and in this case have been used to locate the scraps a bit quicker, spawn helicopters, set the time of day, and set the weather. So nothing too nutty, and nothing that changes gameplay, only functions that make it a bit quicker to record this video and to keep the video light and bright, and links are in the description below. Right, on to the main event. At some point, you may have stumbled across a glowing piece of paper, likely at the top of the crane near the construction site or next to the Mount Chiliad cable car landing. If you pick one of these up, it starts the characters on an extended quest to find out who killed Lenora Johnson. In order to complete the quest and find out who Lenora's killer is, you need to collect all 50 scraps. Now, while this is technically Franklin's quest to complete, any characters can pick up the scraps. I'm using Trevor here because of his higher piloting skill. Now we'll be doing this working our way from the bottom up. It's not the most efficient route, but it's consistent, which means it's less chance of missing one. So let's start off in the port of Los Santos uh, with this scrap on top of these shipping containers. Now it's a bit of a faff to get to, so you might have to do a bit of parkour to access it. Next, we're off to the lower level of Los Santos Airport, near the entrance, here. Heading to the boatyard, this scrap is in front of the Helms cabin on the tugboat in dry dock. On top of this structure, near Los Santos International Airport, Now the next one's a bit of a pain in the backside. It's located along the tram line near where the LS car meet would be in GTA Online. The easiest way at it is to follow the tram line on the map to this exit, then head in on foot or on a bike. Once you're in the general vicinity, you can find the letter on this landing next to the tracks. Off to the car scrapyard next, one of the silliest businesses in Los Santos. Look for the bus that's been chopped in half in the shed with the porty potty in front of it. For the seventh scrap, we're heading to an old estate near the stormwater channel. Look for the letter on the back step of this old grey building.
Off to the self storage and mall complex next, where you'll find the scrap in this dumpster. Heading to Vespucci Beach Skate Park, the next scrap is located in the double kidney bowl next to the beach side stairs. Across to this small island off the east coast of Los Santos, we're heading to a small sandbar beachy thing on the ocean facing side of the island. And a quick tip here, if you're stuck on the side of the hill, you can get a bit of more traction by aiming your pistol as you ascend. Back to town for the next one, to the canals behind the marina. Head down the stairs, into the water, and onto this pylon service area under the bridge. Off to the pier next, this one's located in front of the blue doors at the elevated cafe right at the end of the main pier. Now you've probably driven past this one dozens if not hundreds of times. Head to the stormwater overpass and we're looking for the scrap in between the supports for this archway. Number 14 is at the top of the crane next to the construction site, but it's a bit of a prick to get to, so we'll leave that one for last. Off to the movie studio next, behind the main set you'll see some stairs. Head up to the top where you'll see the letter scrap in between two beige service boxes. Heading to the low-rise construction site, look for the more open area where the foundations have recently been poured. There's sort of a pit thingy in the middle here, the letter scrap is in that. Mirror Park is next, where we're looking for the small lake at the bottom of the outlet for the last act dam. Head down to the shoreline and make your way to the middle gate. You'll find a letter scrap on the little round doodad. Ooh, and sometimes it's worth taking a moment to uh, enjoy the scenery too. And we're off to the artificial lake in the cemetery. There's a little island in the middle with what looks like a small crypt. You'll find the letter scrap next to that. Over to the skate park where we'll find the letter scrap in the middle of the half pipe.
Next up, go to the Country Club, where you'll find the private pool at the back. Go to the bar in the island of the pool, and on the right hand side you'll see the letter next to it. Off to the motel complex in the middle of town where we'll find the scrap on the bench near this outdoor seating area with the chimney. Over to the race course behind the Diamond Casino next. This will look a little different to GTA Online, but it's the same spot. We're looking for this scrap about halfway up the middle set of bleachers. Next on the list is the observatory. On the car park side, there's a hedge maze. You'll find the letter scrap in the middle of that maze. Over to the cliffside McMansions not far from Vinewood next. Anyone who's done an agency contract will be familiar with this place. You'll find this one in the entry to the gym sort of games room thingy behind the pool. Heading to the Vinewood side next, we'll find this one at the top of the eye. Now Rockstar have made it easy by adding a ladder to the side of the letter as well. Heading to the fruit stall just out of town, we're looking for a scrap next to the community notice board. On to another fruit stall this time at the end of this dirt road at the lookout, next to one of the benches. Heading to the eastern side of the map, there's a rocky outcrop just off the shore. The piece is hidden behind some rocks. We're off to the abandoned mine now, where we'll find the letter next to the entrance.
Back over to the east coast again, we're looking for this little grotto. Up the back, on the left, you'll find a bit of a sandbar and we're heading to the back of that. Over to this abandoned house and a shed on the dirt road out in the sticks. There's a derelict billboard on the corner there. Just behind the billboard, we'll find the next piece. Next up, we're heading to this rural construction site. We're looking for this circular structure. In the middle of that, we'll see a provision for a pillar with a bunch of rebar poking out. The piece is in there. Now, be warned though, getting in and out is a little fiddly. Visiting the marshlands next, there's a piece just off the trail here. Heading downstream, we'll see another under this small bridge over a creek outlet. Also, there's a random event here if you're so inclined. Just make sure you pick up a car before you start or it will go very sideways very quickly. Heading to the church out of town, and those of you who've completed some of Lamar's missions in GTA Online will be familiar with this. The next piece is in the churchyard next to these elevated graves. The concrete works are next, the one we visit in the Minutemen mission. At the top of the tower is where you'll find this one. The chopper makes it really easy, but you can also scale the ladder if you've come by land. Back up to Trevor's airfield and there's a rocky outcrop near the runway. We'll find the next piece on top of that. Heading to the abandoned hotel in Polito where we went satellite dish hunting with Cletus. We'll find the next one in the old swimming pool. Next up, we're heading to the canyon run between the ocean and the Alamo Sea on top of this peak, not too far from one of Dom's parachute jumps. On one side of this island, not far from the mouth of the LMOC. This one's a little awkward to get to with the chopper, but you'll get there. Oh, and don't forget about the aiming trick too to get back up the bank if you need it. Hanging about the Alamo Sea, head to this old boatyard on the northern shoreline. We can find the next piece under this ratty looking pergola next to the workshop. After this radio tower outpost next, about halfway up the mountain. 
This can be a bit awkward to get to in the chopper, but there's a spot to set down just behind the wooden cabin. The letter scrap can be found between the cabin and the new looking corrugated iron shed. Moving back over to Polito, we're heading to the market garden next. The letter scrap can be found about halfway along the second row from the road under the white shade cloth. Heading to the lighthouse on the outcrop off the northeastern shore next, you can find this on the ocean side of the lighthouse at the top of the landing. Next up, we're making our way to just south of the logging works, off the trail behind a couple of trees this time. Keep an eye out for some stacked logs for a landmark. Next we're heading to the top of Mount Chiliad, or more specifically, the cable car platform. I inadvertently picked this up while I was capturing Glen Scoville for Maud, which is what we're looking at here. Continuing north, we're heading to this stilt beachfront property. We can find the letter scrap on the deck at the rear of the property there. Over to the homeless camp to the north of the map, where we can find the next piece in the entrance to the tent with the porta potty and the social justice for all flag. Just across the road to the car park for the northern shore of the island. We're looking for the penultimate piece at the entrance to the men's room in this toilet block. And number 50 is located at the back of this dilapidated house, a bit further up the coastline. Finally, let's head back to number 14. This one's right up the top of the large crane near the construction site. You can approach this using the chopper like I have. Or if you're not feeling confident with a helicopter, you can land and take the stairs. Be warned though, this takes a while. So with the last piece collected, you'll now be able to piece together the final letter, which says March 15th, 1975. Attention David Richards. My dear David, listen. I know you're a little offended by your discovery of my petite indiscretion as the French would say. But I want you to understand, that's all it is. A little indiscretion. I agree wholeheartedly with you. 
my actions were a little inhumane. But that's not a bad thing. Inhumanity is the very watchword, the very currency, the very lifeblood of the artist. My inhumanity makes me human. It's thanks to my inhumanity that I'm able to speak to people with the moral authority of the sinner and the creator all at once. I had to kill her. I had to do it in that way. The way that would hurt me most. By torturing her slowly and painfully, then sending mementos from our date to her family. And in the years since, I've had to, at times, goad her family into further suffering. Just to prove how very much I understand suffering, and how I can represent it best as an artist. Isn't it better that one family suffers, so the world can be free to enjoy, to learn, and to be cleansed by my masterpieces? Don't even bother answering that. The answer is obvious. And if you get it wrong, well, then you're less of a man than I thought. But let us not concern ourselves with such trivialities. We are artists, my friend. The last of a dying breed. I dread the day when you finally retire and Solomon takes over. Sure, yeah, I love the kid. But he's a remorseless hack with none of your passion, your creative zeal. He's a weak, livid moralizer, hiding in the body of a vinewood decadent. He understands nothing about why we act as we do. Not because we can, but because we must. And that's the thing. Some people take advantage of their position in this town for pleasure. As if sleeping with multiple young girls or torturing hitchhikers or eating dogs could ever be fun. It's awful. I only do it to experience it so my heart is truer, deeper, more meaningful. And I believe you know that. I cannot wait for you to read my new draft of Leard. I really removed the cliches that ruined Shakespeare's plays and found the power, the moment, the thing we talked about that wonderful night in Mexico when we paid the hookers to stab each other. Anyway, I hope you and Rachel have worked through your problems. I look forward to making Friday supper again soon. You've always been an inspiration to me. Your dear friend, Dreyfus. Essentially, it's just a note that attempts to justify this malignant, narcissistic sociopath's abhorrent treatment of an actress back in the 70s. And once that's cleared, a new map marker will appear for Franklin. Head over to the marker, making sure you have something sharp on you, like a machete, knife, axe, or something similar. And once you've confronted our new friend, chase him down and finish him off with a bladed weapon for gold. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Check out the video up the top for another handy guide, or the one down the bottom for some more old Grumpy Gamer goodness. Stay safe, wash your hands, and we'll see you in the next video.